Have you ever wanted to recreate food from some of your favorite movies? Yeah, me too. That's what I'm doing today. Today I'm sticking with the classics. Let me know if you recognize any of these or if you could recreate your favorite food from a movie, what would it be? All right guys, let's get cooking. Now the first recipe I'm making is ratatouille. I have always wondered what this tastes like. Also have a special helper today. She didn't take a very good nap, so she's hanging out, right? Now we're ready. So we're gonna start with two zucchini, two yellow squash, two eggplants. Now here's the thing, these are bigger eggplants. There wasn't a lot of options there today. And then six Roma tomatoes. Now, I do not have a mandolin, so the goal is to cut them all about the same size. Now that all the vegetables are chopped up, it is time to make the sauce. All right, so first we're gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to a hot pan. Then I have one red pepper chopped up into tiny pieces. One yellow pepper, about one onion. Now, I forgot I didn't have any yellow onions, so we're just using green onions today. And about four cloves of garlic. Then we're just gonna mix this around until everything is softened. Once everything is softened, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper and then 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Okay, once it's all done, you would usually add two tablespoons of fresh basil, but we don't have fresh basil, so we're just gonna use some dried basil, about a teaspoon or so, mix that all in. All right, we're gonna take it off the heat, bring it over here, and then smooth it out onto the bottom. All right, one issue that we have is that the sizes are very different. We're gonna actually cut this into fourths, so it will still work. Now it doesn't really matter what you start with, but we're gonna start with eggplant, then squash, tomato, and zucchini. So we are gonna make this go up just a little bit. I feel like it will work a lot better. Now I need a little bit of sauce to go on top. So again, sorry, we don't have basil, so we're just gonna use about a teaspoon or so of dried basil. Then we need a teaspoon of minced garlic. Then we need about two teaspoons of fresh thyme. Then we have about two tablespoons or so of fresh parsley. Then we're gonna add about four tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And we're gonna mix it all up. Now please note, on the real ratatouille, they have their vegetables literally standing straight up. We won't eat all of that, so I laid them flat just to make it so there's not a ton. So you could easily cut this recipe in half. Okay, now I'm gonna spread it around the best that I can. You're going to cook it at 375, we're gonna cover it with foil, cook it for 40 minutes, uncover it, and I'll cook it for 20. All right, I'm here with Sarah, we're gonna taste test something from ratatouille, right? Right, all right, you wanna take a bite? No, thank you. <laughs> well, at least she's honest about it. Okay, I will give it a taste test because this has been like my dream to always try this. I really like that. That is delicious. If you're looking for a side dish, this highly recommend. Takes a little time, but worth it. I'm gonna rank this one a five out of five. The next recipe you're making is from one of my favorite shows, Harry Potter. If you've been to any Universal Studios, you know that they sell frozen butterbeer, so that's what I'm making. So to start, you're gonna take one liter of cream soda, which is three cans. Then you're gonna take one of the cans and pour it into the ice cubes. Stick the ice cubes in the freezer. Once they are nice and hard, you're gonna take your ice cubes and dump them into the blender. Then you're gonna pour in the rest of the drinks. Then you're gonna add three teaspoons of imitation butter flavor and about two cups of your favorite vanilla ice cream. That is it. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on and blend it up. I have Sarah here with me. We're gonna give it a taste test. Put your straw in. Give it a try. Mm, not bad. Rating? A five out of five. Five out of five. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. The butter flavor is a little strong. Now this is the cake that Bruce Blogtrotter ate. If you know what I'm talking about, you know how good this looks. And I've literally had dreams about it to make it and to try it. Now this cake is massive and I didn't have a cake pan big enough. So 
went to the store and found one. We might have to do a few different shifts because I need the bigger cake pan, but it'll be worth it. We're first gonna start with a cup of butter. Now we're gonna double this recipe because we need it to be big. Then we need two packages of four ounce unsweetened chocolate. Now it's easier if you break it into little pieces. It will melt a lot faster. Then you're gonna microwave this. I do 30 second increments until it's all melted. Okay, now that this is all melted, we're just gonna go ahead and set it aside. Now in a separate bowl, you're going to add five cups of flour. Five might seem like a lot, but remember we're doubling. Now on top of the flour, we're gonna add four and a half cups of sugar. Then we're gonna add two cups of cocoa. That seems like a lot, but just remember, doubling. On top of that, we're gonna add four teaspoons of baking soda, and then just one teaspoon of baking powder. And then we have three teaspoons of salt. And we're just gonna mix this together. You guys, there is a lot here, there is a lot. I'm glad that we voted for the big bowl and not a smaller one. This is the secret ingredient to make it good. Sour cream, so we need three cups. So this is about two cups, and then we need about a half of the other container. All right, then we're gonna add two cups of water, six eggs, and dump in your chocolate mixture. And the last thing, four teaspoons of vanilla. All right, I don't know if I've ever mixed anything so big before. We're gonna kind of incorporate it before we start mixing so it's not a huge mess. All right, this is thick and good. Let's put it into a pan. All right, we're gonna take about a third of our mixture and the easiest way to do this is I'm just gonna use a big giant measuring cup to put it in. I put some parchment paper down, I floured it a little bit, we're just gonna spread this out. This is an 18 inch pan. It's huge. Okay, we're gonna cook this 350, 30 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna do 30 first just to make sure. Cake looks good. Now we just have to wait for it to cool and use the pan again. So it takes a little bit longer because I just have that one giant pan. So I'm putting down another parchment paper and adding more. Okay, so the plan was to do three layers, but to be honest, I think I'm only gonna get two. I don't have quite enough batter. So, I'm just gonna stick it with two, spread this around. I have parchment paper on the bottom, so it'll help come up a little bit easier. And then we're gonna cook it. All right, the cakes are all done cooking. They've cooled, now it's time for the frosting. Now on Matilda, the frosting is like this deep, dark, almost scary looking frosting. That's what we're gonna make. We need one and a half cups of butter that is nice and softened. Then we're gonna put in eight ounces of cream cheese that is also softened. Then we're going to mix this together until it's smooth about three minutes. Once it's all fluffy, we're gonna add three teaspoons of vanilla. And then one and a half cups of cocoa powder. Then gently, ever so gently, mix this in. We're gonna also add a fourth cup of milk. If we need to add more milk, we will. Now for my favorite part is the powdered sugar. We need about seven cups of this. But we're gonna do about two cups right now and then mix it in and then slowly continue to add the powdered sugar. Well, uh, next time I will get a bigger bowl. We had a few things, but it looks so good. Now I'm not a professional here, but I feel like we can make this look decent. This is a heavy, heavy cake. Holy cow, it's literally like, oh, maybe 15 pounds. It's a lot. All right, out of all the recipes, this is the one I wanted to try the most. I've never made a cake this big. And if you didn't know, my favorite food happens to be frosting. Oh my, that is good. All right, you guys, this type of video was new for me, so if you like it, make sure you tell me down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.